What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the show. It's another episode of Schmodown Backstage. It's Tuesday. We're going a little later than normal, but we're very excited to be here with you, and there is a lot to break down. Christian Harloff has announced a number of new matches. We've got a number of things going on. The season starts. We're just around the corner. It's very, very exciting for all of us. A stacked show on Backstage today with a couple awesome guests. Tons and tons and tons of stuff to talk about. Uh, and of course, and of course, you have rookie matches coming up, players that we've never seen before uh, that are that are on the horizon. So so tons and tons and tons to talk about. We do apologize for a little bit of late start. We had some technical difficulties on our end. Uh, and then I had a work conflict that uh, made it I had to be an hour late. But then the show will be normally at 1230 on Tuesdays, like you guys know and love. Now, it has been a crazy, crazy few weeks in the movie trivia showdown. The free agency special happened. It was followed by the draft, which was equally nuts. Um, awesome, awesome viewership on those. Great interaction from you guys. And of course, Christian Harloff announced that the faction merch being on sale, some of which, surprise, surprise, you guys are going to be seeing today on the show because one of our guests actually has a piece of it with them. Um, that stuff is all on sale on the Skybound website. And a portion of the, of the proceeds from all those sales They go directly into a pot, and that pot ultimately is what we are playing for. The factions are playing for that pot, so get excited for it. If you guys want to support what we're doing, there's tons of ways to do it, but that is one of the absolute best ways you possibly can do it. So, guys, I'm going to get this out right at the top of the show, Um, just right at the top of the show. It's uh, it's definitely going to be a, a lot of fun today, but we have a very, very special particular thing in the works today that might get to happen. And I'm going to just set the stage right now. Our first guest coming up in a few minutes here is William the Beast Bibiani, one of the legends of the game, one of the great players, one of the stars of the league right now. Um, obviously, faction, you know, uh, teams, title holders, tons of good stuff going on with Bibbs. Uh, Bibbs was not in the horror free-for-all this last year. He wasn't, which is inexplicable considering uh, he's a horror expert. He's the greatest free-for-all player we've ever had in the game. Uh, it was won by none other than the singles champion of the world, Adam the Coyote Collins, who will be my second guest today coming on a little later in the show after I've talked to Bibbs at length about all the different cool rules in the rule book. So as you know, when we hit certain goals, when we hit certain goals on this show, we get to have these little 10 question exhibition matches. And many of you asked for this possible exhibition match, which was a head to head horror exhibition match between Adam Collins and William the Beast Bibiani. Now, if we hit our goal today, at the end of the show, we're going to get to see that happen. Limited number of questions, of course. We don't get to just go to eternity because these guys may never miss. But we have a maximum of 13 questions that I can ask these guys. We'll go best to 10. And if we have to go to 13, we will. It ends at 13. But that's how we're going to do it, guys. So the goal today that we have to hit to get this to happen, because this is a very special one, is 500. Now, I, and, and many of you uh, did donate every single week for that to happen. You're so generous. We're so happy to see it. But I would love it if all of you that are watching the show would jump in and donate small amounts throughout the show. Get in your questions about the rule book. Get in your questions for Collins. We're going to be talking to him a little later about what he thinks about Merle uh, and Snyder. There's so much cool stuff to do on that. So uh, get in your donations today. And um, we are going to be bringing on our very first guest right now uh, to the show. We welcome William, the beast, Bibiani, the greatest free-for-all player the world has ever seen. Uh, member of the quirky Mercs faction. He, he, he enters the show now. Beast, how you doing? Uh, I'm okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't know if I've actually earned the title of greatest free-for-all player. I feel like if I'd won one, that would qualify. But uh, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Uh, I, uh, feel, I feel it's a pretty, uh, a pretty agreed upon title for you, the greatest free-for-all player. I don't think that, I don't think I'm exaggerating there. You really feel like I'm exaggerating there? Come on. Oh, I don't know. I feel like there's I feel like there's some wiggle room there. If people wanted to argue that it's one of the people who actually won a free for all that they would have some leg to stand on. But I do appreciate it. I'm very proud of how I've done it all the free for alls. I think that's a ludicrous thing to say. I think if I was to say to you, Viviani, in a casual conversation, this person is the greatest free for all player of all time. You would look at me and you would say, are you nuts? Have you met me? That's what would happen if I presented it the other way. Because I know no, you, because you take an enormous amount of pride in that. I do take an enormous amount of pride in that, but I'm also not rude. So I would probably just say, oh, well, that, that, good for them. Good for them. That's that's great. I, I think I've done well. And okay. then we'd move on with our conversation because you made it awkward. That's uh, fair. But uh, other than that, yeah. No, thank you so much. And uh, I'm really excited. And uh, I really hope I get to play Adam Collins at the end of this thing. It's not an official sanctioned match or anything. What I really want is an official sanctioned all horror, at least exhibition match someday. But this will be really, really nice. And it'll definitely scratch an itch for me. So, Well, perhaps that's one we'll get to see. I'd be very, very exciting. We have our very first 
Super chat of the day. We start things off with wild card here. This actually happened before the show even started. Uh, hey guys, first time donation there. Huge fan. Let's go den this season. Got my hoodie coming in the mail. Curious to see what the new IG categories are this season since it's my favorite division. The IG category is not yet announced. Uh, oh. The competitors have gotten to see them. It's an exciting list. I think it's a great expansion for, for the league and I can't wait for Christian to announce that. Yeah, uh, I agree. I think it's I think it's really going to open up the IG category. I think it's been the same like what is it like dozen categories for a long time now and yes. i think uh we're, there's some changes and there's some also sort of reshufflings and i think it's going to potentially uh really throw a, a monkey wrench in the whole inner geekdom division uh, i think is we're going to get to see some champions actually uh push to the limits and i think we're going to see some uh, newer competitors uh be able to show some strengths that nobody knew would be the most important thing in the world so i'm really excited to see how that's going to shape up I see Dan South in the chat here, 1973. Dan South, big supporter of a lot of the stuff that we do. Uh, my two favorite players on screen, a great backstage today. Thank you so much, Dan. That's, Thank you. that's wonderful. Look at that's that. Really kind of you. How can you, like, how can you like Bibbs and Bateman as your two favorite players? I feel like we're in the Shimoda and we're polar opposites, Bibbs. I feel well, like you, there's, we here's, the, here's the thing about apples and oranges. They're both delicious. They're both yeah. delicious. So we are two great tastes that taste just awful together. But, like, you keep us slightly separate and we're really fun. For the record, Bibbs has called me delicious on the show. You are um, you are a snack, sir. All right, let's continue moving here, sir. Let's keep order in this court. <laughs> Jesse Smith here. What's up, Bibbs? Was Hi. the what was the weirdest slash hardest rule to write? That's from Jesse Smith. Another super chat here. I'm going to read these as I see them on screen. And of course, we have the great Ben Goddard here with us as well. We'll be reading your stream labs throughout the day. The Schmobot is on. If you want to get something uh, crazy in there, you want to harass us, you want to make a bold prediction, um, whatever you want to do, throw it in there, get those in. Uh, we, we definitely want to hit that goal today. I can't wait to see this matchup. It'll be super fun. Uh, the next one here is from Dagan S. Broad. Salute Ben Bibbs. Growl, growl. So uh, we're going to get to that question, uh, Jesse. Yeah, we're we'll talk about that. We need to talk about the whole process that went into writing the rules. I feel like that's been shrouded in mystery, and I think my cat just knocked something over, so... Thanks for that, Luca. Uh, but uh, we'll talk about the process and what went into it. And there were a lot of, there was no rule, I think, that was basically just, oh, we'll do this. And everyone was like, sure. Like, no, there were long conversations and really intense debates about a lot of them. So, oh, it was a uh, heck of we'll a process. There's yeah. a lot of steps to it. So, it a, uh, n next one here is from uh, Hamstrack. Good to see Bibbs on here off topic. Does anyone know where I could buy some soaps or a good audio drama? That is an excellent question. If you want a good audio drama, you need to reach out to Whitney Seibold, my co-host over at Critically Acclaimed Network. Uh, he writes and uh, directs and produces them. Uh, he might be able to hook you up with one of that. And if you want some soap, boy, howdy, you want to go to Salt Cat Soap. That's our logo right here. It's Luca. It's designed by M. Lapis Da Silva. We just dropped a whole bunch of really cool soaps on our Etsy shop. If you go to Etsy, search for Salt Cat Soap. We have these delicious breakup bars designed by M. Lapis Da Silva. This is my favorite scent in the world. They smell like dark chocolate and orange. We've got this incredible smelling fur bars. Oh my God, is that gorgeous? We got these strawberry and buttercream macaron duos. They look just like macarons, but they're soap. Don't eat them. You'll be fine. They'll just taste like soap, but mm, scrumptious. We've got these Lucky Luca bars. They are scented like clover, and they look like a cat's ears. Those are really, really awesome. We got some uh, creamy salt hearts, and we've got definitely Luca is knocking things over. So excuse me for one moment. We have a number soap. of soaps, a number of soaps getting a, getting a strong presentation here on Shmodan backstage today. But hey, it was a question from, uh, from somebody who, who, who super chatted here. So, you know, it's, it's very relevant. And now things are getting serious. Um, I will take this. I will take this quick moment to point out, guys. Did you see? Did you see the hoodie that Bibbs was wearing? Did you see it? Um, he was wearing a hoodie with the Quirky Mercs logo on it. I don't have my dungeon merch yet, but I will tell you, I've seen a number, a number of great pieces of dungeon merch floating around. I've seen coffee cups. I've seen t-shirts. I've seen hoodies. There's all kinds of cool stuff. Now we have an adorable cat on the screen. You're That's bad, happening as well. He was knocking over stuff in the kitchen and trying to steal food. You're bad, Luca, but we love you. <laughs> so, uh, I was just remarking, Bibbs, on your Quirky Mercs hoodie yeah. that you're wearing right now. I was just very, talking very about- nice. It fits like a dream. Um, and uh, it's really nice to represent, you know, I wanted like, I wanted to represent the Quirky Mercs for a while, but we just didn't have merch because last season was so weird. And, uh, yeah, this is really, really cool. Um, yeah, I, I, again, I, I'm kind of, he's so cute, isn't he? I can't keep focused on this. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, cats. Okay. But yeah, this uh, hoodie's fantastic. Oh, my hair is all messed up. I'm back. <laughs> so... 
Uh, I want to talk a little bit about that, actually, you know, before we get into the rule book conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and, and by the way, guys, just as a quick reminder, you know, the hoodie that he's wearing is for sale right now. You can get that. All the other merch that's for sale on Skybound. And a portion of those proceeds will be going into a pot at the end of the year that any faction that wins, the first and second played factions will be splitting it. Obviously, first we'll get a little bit more, but uh, that's Oh, how I didn't know it was work. the top two. That's cool. I thought it was just the number one. That's That's really awesome. Yeah, it's the top two. So if you guys oh, buy cool. merch from your favorite factions, you know, two out of your eight, you're going to 25% of them guaranteed are going to get supported in some way, uh, which is definitely very exciting. And and the merch is great. I can't wait to get mine. I, I need a hoodie. I, I think I have a t-shirt mm -hmm. in the mail right now, but I need a hoodie. So you should wear the hoodie like underneath your sport coat. You look really fancy that way. We actually talked about that as one of the ideas when uh, the behind the scenes dungeon recruitment was happening. We were like, maybe, maybe we do like hoodie under sport coat because of Smets. Like maybe that's how, that's the look that oh, we yeah. pull off, you know, that kind of that's a thing. That's cool. So. I yeah. like that. Did, did you, are you going to go for it? Is that the, is that the plan? We'll see. There's still a lot of stuff that's ah. got to happen. Still a lot of stuff that's got to happen before matches. I don't have a match scheduled for a while, but you do. I you do. do, sir. Your first match. It's like it's like we flash back to spectacular 2019. I know. I keep right? thinking about this because I'm going to be playing Paulo Yama, and uh, there was a there was a decent chance two spectaculars ago uh, yes. that if I had defeated you in the first uh, wave of spectacular, that I would have taken uh, Paulo Yama in a title shot and boy do i regret not making it to that because that was a rough night for me <laughs> yeah i am uh, looking forward to playing paul i've never played paul in singles I played him he's really tough in teams what a great competitor super smart um a lot of respect for him as a person and as a competitor and um yeah it's it it really does feel though that like okay cool the new season starting who do i get to play one of the toughest guys in the league Cool. Don't you sort of think, Bibbs, that now the position you're in, and I would say the same one I'm in, the same one Snyder and Dan and everybody who's not Adam Collins, uh, everybody who is everybody, all, all of us who are not holding that singles title, there's like 15 of those guys you're talking about now. Yeah. That are all that that are all that person. I don't want to sure. play Liz Shannon Miller. Yeah. I don't want to play against Oyama or Chance. I wish I hadn't played Liz Shannon Miller. <laughs> I don't want to play against you or 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 any yeah. of them. Any Snyder? I mean, Irwin. They're all like everybody's yeah. so good now. The and kid. there's some people. And there's some people who, if you actually, if you look at the rankings over at theshmodownlive.com, if you look at the rankings and like the top like 15 is all really really incredible. But if you scroll down a little bit, there's some people who just haven't had good luck lately, or. Uh, or what have you, who are also fantastic in the bottom half of the rankings. Like Drew McQueenie has been added back to the rankings. Yeah, he's not in yep. the top 15. He's like number 20 or something. Yeah. He's, he kicked the, he kicked my butt in singles. I mean, last time a, I played him in singles. He's tough. He's a legendary player. I mean, I'm yeah. certainly, I, I know he's got his eye on me this season, so I've never played yeah. against McQueenie and uh, I, I don't know. recommend it. I don't he's, recommend it. It's not. He's a good player. He's, a good player. he's very good. He's very knowledgeable. But uh, but that's the thing, you know, when you're in the top 10, especially if you've been there like for a while, you know, you and I are legacy players now. It's like we would have to really uh, uh, not bring it for a while. We'd have to have like a really, really, really shoddy season for us to get matched up with people who haven't, you know, reached that level yet or haven't proved that they're at that level yet. So every match I play, whether it's singles or teams at this point, is just this hair pullingly scary match where I'm not I'm playing someone who has studied me, who's played me before in one capacity or another, someone who might very well have my number or do I have his? <laughs> I don't know, but regardless, it's going to be a hell of a match. I've always wanted to play Paulo Yama one on one, and uh, I look forward to doing it. I again, I just I'm a big fan of him. What an incredible first season he had! And even though you know, Molotov shrimp cocktail donated yeah. twenty dollars. An hour and twelve minute delay, and your eyebrows still don't look acceptable. You disappoint me, Bateman. <laughs> Suggestion, yes. you should propose some kind of anniversary exhibition championship in honor of Schnepp. Howdy Bibbs. Also, hey Goddard. Well, TJ, thank you so much for that. Um, rest in peace to the great John Schnepp. It's a great yeah. idea. And uh, thank you for the comments about my eyebrows. They're always welcome on this show. Uh, I think we would be, we would feel, it wouldn't feel like we were having an episode of Schmodown backstage if we didn't get, you know, a nice tasty eyebrow comment from TJ. So where does that, is that a thing? Where does that come from? 
Everybody knows about it, Bibbs. Just look it up on the internet, okay? No, I'm oh, kidding. I'm sure it's if a- I Google <laughs> that real fast, Ben Eyebrows, it'll just 18 different things on BuzzFeed. You it's, know? A, it's a it's a 18 thing. 18 gifts that, that remind us of Ben's eyebrows. <laughs> it's a thing that TJ started doing. I, I don't really know how to explain it otherwise. It started a while ago, and, and now he does it, and that's a thing that happens. So I'm going to keep reading a few more of these so we can keep up with them. There's a lot of them coming in, guys. You guys, right. are, doing a, you guys are doing great. We had a very special one a second ago here, actually from Adam Collins, who oh. says, I support this match with the $5 super chat. So he obviously wants to get in there. He wants to prove himself. I've looked over the questions. I think you guys will make pretty short work of it, but then again, I don't really know. Horror is not a category that I feel like I'm a, a aficionado on what is and isn't easy. So really, uh, you know that I've talked about this. No, <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> uh, next we up, know Michael, I've got your number. <laughs> Michael Nicastro. Yep. Hey, Bibbs, what's your favorite Robert Bresson movie? Oh, uh, you know, it's hard not to. Okay, first off, Robert Bresson, uh, French filmmaker, very minimalist in a lot of ways. Uh, I love uh, Man Escaped. I think that was the first one I saw. But um, I think my favorite is Lancelot du Lac. It's this very stripped down interpretation of the King Arthur myth. It's free of all of the fancifulness. And it's just right down to the character work. Just really, really great examination of something that is usually treated in a very over the top way, but treated in just a very humanistic way. So I highly recommend it if you haven't seen it. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. Guys, there's 330 of you watching, 128 likes. Let's get those up to 330. Can we get can we get a quick 200 likes real fast? Just real quick, guys, 200 Mind. likes. That'd be great. That'd be excellent. Uh, Gabriel Leroux here. There's more SEN employees than fans in the chat. There's a lot in here. You got your your manager, Koi Jandro, who's your biggest cheerleader here. He's, Hi, Koi. He's, it's all about it. It's all about it. Um, I feel like, Bibbs, I, you can correct me if I'm wrong on this. I don't think that you and Koi were super close before he drafted you in the Shimoda. I think you guys knew each other professionally, but I never got the sense that you guys were like thick as thieves. I feel like you ended up on the perfect faction. I, feel like I think I did. I do. I, in heaven. I do actually. I, I agree with that. Uh, Koi and I had been like on some like movie or TV fights over at Screen Junkies before, and we'd run into each other in the Schmodown circles when he was playing. And I was always a really, really big fan. I remember in Anarchy, he had that incredible Jurassic Park thing with yes, uh, yes, Wait, I Know Stacey. This, which is just one of the best intros I've ever seen. Uh, and I remember talking when, you know, every the draft was getting started the first time, and I spoke to a couple of different managers, and there were a couple of people who said, we'd like to draft you if it works out, and I'm like, cool, and Koi was one of them, and Koi got to me first, and really quickly, like that day, we started falling into a groove. We're both really passionate about the the Schmodown, but we also love aspects of it that not everybody gets just as excited about. We love the pageantry. We love the character work. We want to make sure that although we're competitive and we care about winning, we also know that it's a show and we really like having fun. So with Koi, I think I found a great balance. I think he's a sneaky good manager. Um, I think some people get a lot of credit for being a great manager because, you know, they won a faction, uh, a war last season or whatever. And that's no slight to Shannon. She's amazing. She's absolutely incredible. But if you don't win those awards, sometimes it's not really obvious how talented you are. And I feel like Koi is the kind of manager who you talk to him beforehand, you tell him what you need, he gives you everything you need and more, and he makes you a stronger player. And I think he's I think he's a huge part of why Shazam won a a team's belt last season. And I think he's a big part of why last year didn't kind of destroy me because with the pandemic and not being able to play for half a year, I was pretty demoralized for a lot of it. And Koi kept me going. So at no point did I seriously consider changing factions. Luca, you want to get down from there, buddy? You want to get down from the (laughs) DVD shelf? Thank you, buddy. Okay, we're good. Well, it seems like a match made in heaven. I'm glad to see that it's worked out for you. Uh, you know, there's obviously, I, I think it How are you liking like, Kaiser? Are you steamrolling over him yet? Or or is he, uh, he got you under his thumb? Steamrolling over Kaiser. Kaiser is the mastermind here. He, okay. He, uh, no, look, the dungeon is a, it's, it's a hodgepodge bunch of people from all different backgrounds. And, and uh, Kaiser pulled it all together. It's a bit of a mystery exactly how it all happened, but I feel very good about it. I think it's, it's not like Dan Merle and I are best friends. You know, uh, we're, 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 we're teammates, potentially okay. teammates. You know, it might uh, help yeah. to be friends. Uh, look, it, Bibbs, we, we approach the game differently. I have very specific okay. goals. Only and... enemies for Ben Bateman. That'll, that I don't character. need to be I'm enemies. Gonna... I just okay. I just know what I'm here for, and it's to win, okay. and that's the point. So that's why okay. I'm on that faction. That's why I'm with the people I'm with, and I don't think I don't think anybody watching this show believes anything different. I was very clear about it the whole time. So, sure. Oh, I, I didn't imply otherwise. I just 
Yeah. We have we approach the game differently. That's why we were asked to work on the rule book together. Because yes. we're kind of the exact opposite in how we approach the game, and yet our both our approaches seem to work. So Yes, exactly. So we're gonna be getting to that in one minute here. We have a great generous donation here from PLD, the man, the myth, the legend, uh, just the guy all over the place now. I feel like everybody knows PLD now. Uh really would love to see this match take place, Ben. Uh, really would love to see this match take place. Ben, how many days would you need to prepare to win a horror free for all? Oh, I don't know. Maybe <laughs> something in the range of sixty would be my guess. No, I think I do. Do you have anything else to do in those days, or is it just 24 hours a day, nothing but horror that whole time? Are you like day job, come home and study? I actually think I could win a horror free for all if you gave me a week. I think I could win a horror free for all if you gave me a week. Yeah. What if I wrote the questions? Uh, I mean, then I don't think it would be the normal (laughs) standard of questions, but if it was the the normal Schmodown level, I think I could win it in a week. I think I could win it in a week. Yeah. I know that sounds outrageous, but generally speaking, the stuff you need to know is not the same as Star Wars, where you would really need to dedicate. You know. Well, it, it beats a more of a general genre category. So yes, exactly. there's a decent chance that, and again, a lot of them are going to be pretty surface, but then they'll throw you some curveballs. And again, the thing with the free for all is it's not about knowing the answer to every question. It's about making sure that in the current group of Luca, get off Luca, Luca. Hey, Hey, it's about not, it's about knowing more than at least one other person up there. So there's a, you know, there are multiple opportunities to lose that have nothing to do with how much, you know, excuse me a moment. Luca, do you mind, buddy? <laughs> We're getting, this is, I, I promise you guys, this is, uh, what, what's it in wrestling? They say, uh, shoot. Uh, this is not a shoot. Uh, no, this is a shoot. Which one is it? Can somebody tell me? A shoot's the one where it's not planned for, right? This That's is what's happening shoot. with this cat right now. We'll yeah. be right back. Did somebody just try to tell me which it was? Was that Dwayne or Goddard? Yes. Uh, this is a shoot. Yes, this is a shoot because it's not planned. It's not a work. We're not the cat. The cat gimmick is not a work. Uh, guys, for those of you that are watching, we're over 200 in donations already, which is incredible. We've only been live for about a half an hour. Uh, at this rate, we will absolutely hit our goal of 500. We will get to see this horror matchup between Adam Collins and B- the Beast here at the end of the show, uh, which I'm very much looking forward to. So continue to get into those stream labs, continue to get into those super chats um, and get very, very excited for what's next here. We're going to chat about the rule book. So let's talk about the genesis of this thing a little bit, Bibbs. Um, this thing started a while back, started a mm. while back. A long um, time ago. A long time ago. There had been discussions for a long time about a rule book needing to exist. Um, initially, the initial, initial, initial rough draft was I got hired like a year and change ago to write a very rough which I did, which then went to Christian, which then went to legal, which then came back to us. And then they were like, you know what? We need somebody who's actually a writer, like an actual professional writer uh, to do this thing. So you're not giving yourself enough credit. (laughs) And I want to make something abundantly clear here. Uh, Ben's work is absolutely the skeleton on which everything I did is based. A lot of, in fact, I would say the vast majority of the fundamental rules, the rules that everyone could agree on, that's still mostly your text. Uh, but it's all of the new stuff, all of the, the unusual rules, the rule changes, the rules that we talked about in order to get rid of exploits, the, the tricky wording that needed to be in there in order to make sure that the rule book was solid and can't be exploited. That's what I had to go in and do at the end to the best of my ability. And that was not an easy task. But seriously, you worked a ton on this and you deserve credit for that. I appreciate it. That's very nice of you. It, it, it's as you know, because I know you put in, I think an equal amount of work at least, if not more, uh, it, it takes, it's a huge undertaking. I mean, you're talking about, you're talking about literally going through every single possible nuance of this thing. We've been just obsessed with for years. And there's so many different pieces. There's so many phases of the game. I think when we sat down, we all realized I hadn't written even a skeleton for, for uh, three-way or five-way matches. I don't think they even existed. Yeah, we, we, were, we were at the end of the rule book, and they're like, wait a minute, we don't have anything in here about the rules for free-for-all or three, for, or three, four, or five ways. A lot of these like alternate rule modes, we were just sort of, it's easy to, to forget just how many details go into the Schmodown because the generalities are pretty consistent and the details don't come up every single day. But when they do, we need to make sure that there are very specific rules that are set down Every single player is familiar with them. We need to stop having this thing where new people come into the game and they're unfamiliar with the rules. We need to be able to hand them something or email them something so that they understand the complete ins and outs of the game. And we also need to make sure that, again, all our bases are covered in terms of various things that can be challenged, all of the incredibly weird nebulous things that come up that totally surprised us that like, oh, wait, there are multiple release dates for Seven Samurai. Okay, we need to have a rule that covers release dates, that kind of thing. All of these things that... 
again, when you're first doing the rule book, you think it's pretty clear. Okay, so there's three rounds, you just, second round, you spend the wheel twice, all this kind of stuff is straightforward. And then you realize we need a ton of other rules as well, just to cover the minutia and the things that only come up once in a while. And so a lot of writing the rule book was you, uh, me, and uh, if we said who everyone is involved in, I don't want to like out anyone if they don't want to. Yeah, I think, I think we can, I think we can admit the, four, yeah. the group. I mean, they okay. deserves credit. Of course, I just wanted to make sure that no one wanted to be kept private. Uh, but uh, it was you, me, it was Frankie, uh, Janish over from the Schmodown Rundown. Danny and Green it was PJ donated $20. Hmm. How long did it take you to do the rough draft of the rule book, Ben? 60 days? How long will it take for you to be a better shooter than me? Um, it was a Danny Green. Okay, so we're talking, we're talking Danny Green, the legendary three-point shooter in the NBA, has entered the chat. It's very good. Um, I, I think, uh, it looks like I'm frozen on screen. You are frozen on screen. You can, but you guys can still hear me. I wonder why. I can hear you fine. I wonder, can the chat hear me or did I freeze for the chat? I don't know. Do you want me to host for a while? Nope. Everyone should still be able (laughs) to hear you. Okay. Okay. I wonder. That's a great freeze frame. I love it. You look so happy. Yeah. Very jovial. Very jovial. (laughs) Um, why should I, Dwayne, should I jump out and come back in really quickly? Would that be the most Uh, helpful thing? I just, just try turning your video off and back on and see if that. Okay, we'll just return. I'll just try to fill some time. I'll do one of these. Yeah, dance a little bit. That's great. Uh, let's see. That uh, did that do hey! it? Hey, am I back? You am I good. back? You are back. Okay, there we go. Bateman's gonna get memed here. People are saying. I hope not. Not my favorite image. Uh, so, <laughs> so uh, w- what we were talking about though, as as far as all of that stuff and all the little nuances that went into it, and and to answer that question, uh, actually, it, it took like something like twenty six hours to write the initial draft of the rule book. It was. Yeah. It was a lot of time. I mean, because it was literally like, you know, again, like I think the stuff that was the stuff that you did ultimately is going to be way more important because it's looking at the stuff that's going to be referred to. It's the proper stuff. It's the stuff that actually we will memorize the passages, you know, or or we'll refer to them. But in my book, I just had to literally go through, okay, each section of the game. So there's this round. What are the things that happen in this round in a singles match, right? What, yeah. what happens? What would I do? What do people say? And it was that. It's thinking through it and walking through it. So that was that was my role in it. Then we, as you mentioned, we brought in this group to, together to talk it through. Uh, and it went over to it went over to you. Um, and and you went in and did the whole thing. So there's a bunch of rules that have been that have been added to this thing. And you came up with a list of what you thought were the most relevant. So guys, we're gonna go through yeah. some of them now. I'm gonna let Bibbs kind of take over here and explain each one. I can kind of ask some questions. We can sound off. But again, sure. we're doing really well on these donations, guys. So get them in. Make sure to get your Streamlabs, your super chats in. And right now, this rule book, by the way, if you're curious, it's not publicly available yet. So this is kind of a little bit of a preview of it. It is available to patrons, which is patreon.com slash schmodown. You guys all can get your hands on this thing right now. Just go become a $10 patron at patreon.com slash schmodown. You get all of the exhibition matches. You get all the pay-per-views. It's all included in that price. It's the best value we offer here at the show. Um, but I'm going to let you take over here, Bibbs. Go yeah, ahead. sure. Uh, so, okay. Well, again, I put together, there's a lot of little changes, but I, my estimation is only about like 10 or 11 that dramatically affect gameplay. Uh, and uh, these aren't going to be completely changing everything I love about the Schmodown, but they are things that are likely to come up in matches. And I think the big one for me, and I think this might have been the one that we talked the most about, was uh, trying to come up with a proper process for challenges. Yes. Because challenges were messy. People were yelling over each other. It was very difficult for people to uh, put together a cogent argument. Sometimes someone would challenge, and then their opponent wouldn't really get a chance to make a good defense before the judges started ruling so we needed to make sure that there was a clear simple but effective way to do challenges so the new uh, uh, rules about challenges are someone thinks there's a challenge they confer with their manager or their manager thinks they're a challenge and they confer with their player they then have 15 seconds to present their challenge then the defense who or or the opposing team assuming they have a reason to put up a defense uh gets 15 seconds to Uh, dispute that challenge, explain why they think their answer was correct or why they think this point shouldn't be overturned, whatever it is. And during the challenge and the defense, the other side is not allowed to talk. Okay, just you're not allowed to interrupt anyone's time. Everyone just makes their argument. Then the judges confer for however long it takes. And then the judges come back with a ruling. And one of the big rulings here, and we saw this happen last season, is once the judges have ruled, that ruling, as long as it is in, in accordance with what's in the rule book, they're not breaking a rule themselves. That is final. You cannot challenge a judge's ruling. That's it. You, whether you like it or don't like it, 
that's the end of it. We needed to keep this thing concise and clear and give everyone an opportunity to have their say and give the judges an opportunity to make a ruling without being undermined all the time. Yeah, and I, I think it's in reference to things like what happened with Chandra versus Smets, where the surrogates ruling came yeah. back after the ruling and then was challenged, and it was like a, you know precedent was set here, and then they changed the ruling. It's uh, a ruling that we've talked about a little bit in the past that you guys didn't see, but you know there was waffling on the Alba Elba ruling that happened, yeah. and it was kind of a discussion. And it's a little bit we want it to be less of that, where it's you know mm-hmm. you get your chance, you make your point. And then they rule and that's that. So I think that that's a great ruling and I think it'll make the game cleaner and smoother. Yeah, we need to be able to, because I think a lot of the problem with the way that uh, challenges have been used is that there's a lot of an attempt, a lot of them can be used in an attempt to manipulate the judges and try to get them to rule on your side. And what it really needs to be is the judges have the final say you get an opportunity to explain why you think the question is wrong or maybe the judges don't have all the information or you think there was a point of order and then the judges get to make the call. The judges need to be respected. They're the judges, which brings me to the other rule. And this was a very important rule, but it is not an unlimited rule. Uh, There's a rule called the benefit of the doubt rule, which gives the judges quite a bit of leeway to declare an answer that might be superficially inaccurate, a fair, a fair response to the, to the question. Now, that only that rule could be used in like an Elba Alba situation where it's only a matter of pronunciation, it's a matter of spelling. And But here's the thing, two deals with this. One, players can still challenge that kind of rule. They just have to know that they're probably not going to get it. So, for example, the Elvis question in our match yes. with who's the yes. boss, yes. even if that hadn't been multiple choice, there is a decent chance if you would challenge that under the benefit of the doubt rule, they'd know I wasn't talking about, you know, film critic Elvis Mitchell. They would know sure. I meant Elvis. There was that literally a Jeopardy like I watched that week in which someone said Elvis and it was accepted as an answer. They probably would have said that's okay. However, there are still rules about how accurate a title needs to be. So the judge might declare something as fair, but you can point out, well, specifically in the rule book, it says that this many words need to be accurate or uh you know, you, you, you can only be so inaccurate in order to be judged correct. So it's not an infinite amount of leeway. There are things that are still challengeable. But what this will probably do is decrease the number of what have come to be known as petty challenges, challenges that exist just to see if you can get away with them, just to see if it works. And you'll know that there's, that's a really uphill battle to climb. And you really need to prove that you have a good challenge in order to win a challenge. Yeah, and I, I think um, I think it's a better thing for the game. I think it's what we all want. You know, there are obviously famous references in famous references in, in various uh, law films where a lawyer will say admit to their client. You know, the reason you do that is because they, you know, once it's been whatever. It's it's that stuff where it's like they're trying to kind of lawyer their way into something they know is wrong. Exactly. Uh, and I still think some of that will exist in the Shmodan because it is a component of the Shmodan that does exist. I do think that players will continue to try to use it. They just have to be more wary of when they try because yep. of something like the benefit of the doubt rule, meaning. Ultimately, we believe Mark Andreco absolutely knew he, who he was referring to when he said Idris Alba. There's no confusion. There's no Correct. confusion about who he was referring to. On the other hand, you might run into a situation where, if, uh, for example, there's a movie coming out. Alan Godzilla Smithy donated twenty dollars. What's up, Bibs and Ben? Bibs, good to see you on backstage. I want to see this horror battle. If you so won I... the horror free for all, you definitely would have won. Ben, I didn't know you liked horror. What are both of your top two horror movies? Thanks. Ooh. Uh, ben, I'll let you go first. <laughs> uh, I think probably one of my favorite films of all time is The Shining at this point. I would have to say it's risen so high on my list that's hard for me to, to not feel like that's the uh, immediate answer. And I think mm. it's entirely possible that Get Out is the best bot- top two movie of the decade. So it's, it's probably... Right, right off the bat, those those two come to mind for me. Um, there's a handful of others that I I, I, I really like. 2008's The Others. Um, I like that. That's movie a really a lot. good film. That's a really yeah. good film. Uh, for me, uh, for me, uh, probably Sorry, my the Strangers, two, not not the others. That's, the that's strange. I was about to say The Others was. The I, thought, I was like, I do, you, do you not know the release date for The Others? Do we need yeah. to study this? Uh, but uh, Kyle Strangers Van Adore is a good movie. donated uh, for me, $20. the two that were probably the most influential. Hey, Jason has were, uh, some money yeah. for whatever girl you have today. Ben Goddard, it's time we get you to challenge Bateman to determine who the better Ben is. We need to get this match. I volunteer to write Ben-related questions. Every question in this exhibition match between you and Ben Goddard will relate to a character, actor, or director with Ben somewhere in the name. 
So we'll be answering I volunteer a lot of like Ben is back questions. A lot of we'll Ben Kingsley it. questions. Yeah, a lot of Brian yeah. Ben Ben questions. I hope you've seen Radio Land Murders, like mm. that kind of thing. I volunteer to do that. But uh, my most formative horror movies to get back on that topic were, uh, were Evil Dead 2. Hmm. where it was very influential to me as a storyteller and also someone just loves cinema because it's so vibrant and creative and then scream scream came along at exactly the right time when i was in high school and it really connected with me it felt like someone was actually writing teen characters the way that me and the other teenagers that i knew spoke and uh, the way that movies had influenced our lives and on top of that all it's just a corker of a movie and everything about it works so um i'm trying to remember what we were talking about I love the original Halloween also. I think that movie is pretty fantastically scary. I Uh, could put together a top 200 horror movies and not have to like qualify any of them. They're all, there's so many wonderful films in the genre, but yeah, Halloween is undisputable. Absolutely. Um, Who was the, who, who sent in that last super or that last stream lab there, Goddard? Who was it? Who did the Ben challenge, the Ben challenging the Ben? Uh, Kyle Von Adore. Thank you so much for that. I think we're, uh, I think we are moving in the direction of close to 300 now. So uh, Collins will be coming on in about wow. 20 or so minutes. Uh, we should be able to get there if, if, you know, another 10 of you guys want to throw in a $20 donation or, uh, you know, another 20 of you want to throw in 10, whatever you want to do it. Let's let's over the next little while. If you guys want to see it, let's get it happening. Um, so we were talking about the rule book, though. Yeah. And I think we got derailed a little. So we, we were did. talking, you know, the the the. I was talking about how like there are def I think that we were very important that there are a lot of rules in the rule book that sort of protect the judges and make sure that the judges are respected and that their rules are final. But we also wanted to make sure that there were some rules in there that protect uh, the players from situations that have come up before. So we have one, uh, it's not formally called this, but I call it the rhythm section rule uh, that is in the rule book. And what that is, is if the question is posed to the player and the player gives an accurate answer, that isn't the answer the question writers were looking for. That goes to the player. That is not that is not a new question. That's anything the player answered the question right. The issue was on the question. It was a little vague. And so the player gets the benefit of the doubt in that situation. We also have one where uh, in inner geekdom or Star Wars, there's a, mis- there's a judge's mispronunciation rule mm. in which if the judges mispronounce Ambrosio something or present something. $20. Oh, wait. Let's see it. Thank you. Let's do let's. But there's also like if the judges present like, you know, some fictional word in Star Wars or Harry Potter or something, and they present it in such a way that if you know what you're talking about, it's unclear what they're talking about, that challenge will go to the player. So the judges are responsible for making sure that they're pronouncing things correctly or and there's a stipulation in there if the judges aren't sure they're allowed to spell it out. So that's mm. just supposed to help out those players and because that's happened on a couple of occasions and we don't want it to ever happen again. Can I ask you a question, Bibbs? Yeah. Like um, when it comes to name pronunciation, like, mm. uh, you know, Mia Wasikowska, like her name doesn't sound, it's not spelled anything like it's pronounced. Mm-hmm. So what well, it depends is... on where you're from, but yeah. True, 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 true. Yeah. Um, um, but like for pronunciation, you know, the, the yeah. famous Chaswick Bosman and stuff like that, yeah. like, where does that come into play? Uh, the like, word that comes up the in doubt? the rule book, uh, I believe more than any other is besides, uh, the fact that there's benefit of the doubt and minor spelling errors are okay, uh, is phonetic. And this is a word I don't think everyone necessarily thinks about, but it needs to be clear that if maybe you've only read this word and you've never heard it aloud or you've only heard it aloud incorrectly, if it is clear based on your pronunciation or your spelling that you know the answer and that you're only getting maybe some superficial spelling things wrong, it will go to you. So if you say uh, Mia Wazikowska, you'll probably get that. But if, on the other hand, you add a consonant or you change something so that it's clear that you're not remembering the name correctly, and you said it was uh, Mia Bajakovska. Kyle Von Ardor donated $20. Hey, Bibbs, you are the best and nice shirt. Oh, thank you. It's a, it's a hoodie, but thank you so much. I love it. I'm honored to wear it. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so pronunciation is less important than spelling and spelling is less important than knowing that you've, you've got the answer. But again, this is not unilateral. The judges get to declare what's right and wrong. If you think they're wrong, you get the challenge, but it's gotta be, it's gotta prove that you know the answer, even if you're a bad speller. That's basically it. Even if you're a bad speller, you have to be able, because Chasik Bosman, you don't know that there's a D in that. That one you're probably not going to get. But if you put Chad Wick and instead of an I, you put a Y, like Chad Wick, like or Chad Vick or something, you'd probably get that. Yeah, so I mean, like, there's being... always going to be something nebulous about it, but we did the best we can to make it clear what counts and what doesn't. 
Yeah, I mean, it is required as a movie trivia competitor to be pretty specific. So, it's, you know, yeah. you should never lean on this idea, but it is. Exactly. It is and there and there's very specific rules about titles as well uh, in terms of, you know, we've, we've clarified that articles aren't terribly important. However, there are some movies in which having the article, the the or a uh, in front of a word uh, is specific. So, for example, if you ask... Uh, name five members of the, the Suicide Squad, you need to be able to know which Suicide Squad they're talking about. The right. Suicide Squad or Suicide Squad. That's a bad example, but like if the answer to the question was the title of the movie, The Suicide Squad, and you put just Suicide Squad, that would be wrong. Right. Or if there's ones where it's kind of complicated, like, uh, for example, I was bringing this up, Godzilla versus Kong is a movie coming up. However, there's also a movie called King Kong versus Godzilla. So if you add the word king in there or if you transpose those words, that's not close. That's actually confusing. And that implies that you don't know the right title. That's something that maybe could be challenged or that's something that might not go your way. So specificity is important. You don't just get to give the judges the gist of it and tell them like, oh, it's that uh, third movie with uh, Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker. Right, right. I know right. which movie you're talking about, but you don't seem to know the title. That won't go your way. Sure. Yep. Um, we, we have a few things we still have to get to here, guys. We're well yep. on the way to the goal. So thank you guys for doing that. Looks thank like you. about 150 left. Um, we have Collins coming on in about 15 or so, 20 minutes. We have a lot of Streamlabs to get to. So I want to keep talking about the rules, but I have a feeling there'll be some other questions let's in the Streamlabs. So Goddard, let's try to maybe, maybe Bibbs will kind of rapid fire through these, you know, I'll get kind of quick, quick. quick answers so that we can maybe see we get through as many as we can. I can also rapid fire through the rules if you want to, however you want to handle it. No, I want to, I want to do both because I think there's a lot I want to get to today. All right, you 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 guide me. What are we doing next? Uh, Dragon Seventeen. Question for all on screen: Do you think the goat Alex Damon can win uh, the IG belt someday? Absolutely, he's sure. uh, yeah. championship pedigree. When you're a player that wins and consistently wins at that level, just mm -hmm. like Dan, it's you can't put ever put anything past that player. Yeah, he's, he's delivered over and over again. So he's he's in a good position where um, the other division he plays in has a lot of overlap. You know, like if, if I, Star Wars is still an inner geekdom, obviously. So he's already got that down. He just has to make sure he's boned up on everything else. And he played really well last season. So, yeah, it's possible. Why wouldn't it be? I think he's an incredibly talented, smart person. Yep. Um, from Dagan, uh, Ben, what match are you looking for forward to most out of the ones announced? Sorry, it was all broken up. What, what match are you looking forward to most out of the ones announced? You know, I do have to say I'm I'm pretty excited for this this Oyama Viviani match. I mean, it's two players who I've obviously gotten to play against and, and I think are great. So that's one that I think is going to be really, really interesting to watch. I'm, I'm very excited to see Amadou Moses versus Jesse Swift. Uh, I mm -hmm. think Amadou is a player that a lot of us are very curious about how he's going to fare. And you um, should be really curious about Jesse. That guy knows his stuff. I know I'm on his faction, but I, I have a lot of confidence in him. I think he's going to really show some people what he's got. And then ultimately for me, you know, just watching uh, my faction mate, uh, you know, knock down Jeff Snyder is going to be awesome to watch. So I, I can't wait to see that happen. And um, I think that's going to be, I mean, how could you not be excited? That's that they're two of the all time legends they've never played before. Uh, leaving out my own match. Uh, I I'm really excited to see D Melanta take on Damon. Uh, I've been talking to working a lot with D Melanta, trying to help him prepare. And boy, does that guy know his stuff. I think Damon's, you know, Damon, Damon can only be at the top of the heap for so long. I think the Melanta is going to be the one to take him down. Uh, but uh, beyond that, I want to see all the rookies play. I, you know, we've seen some, we've got game tape on some of them. We have no game tape on a few of them. I want to see what they've got to offer. And I want to see who the next Collins is, or if that's like, you know, weird bar to reach, you know, who's going to be the next, I don't know, Stacey Howard, someone who just has this incredible personality and plays the game a totally different way. Who's the next, I, I want to see who these people are and hopefully they're the first, whoever they are and not the next anybody. Right. So I'm super excited to see all the rookies play. That's my big answer to that handful of super chats on screen here as well. Got it. I'm just going to rifle through. Yeah, go ahead. We'll go get back ahead. to him. Uh, Gabriel Rowe, here's a suggestion that would work on a few levels for Ben and Dan team name for a team. Sinister Murder by numbers. Donated 25 euros through super chat. Hi boss. Hi Bibs. Hi bandit. Greetings from Austria. Just hey. wanted to say thank you for the constant entertainment. Been watching the MTS since 2017 and it gets better every season. Can't wait for I can't wait for what's next. Also, if that's what that was, thank you so much. That was a great comment. Thank uh, you so much. And thank you for watching. We really appreciate it. We wouldn't be here without any of you. So thank you so much. So the suggestion here by Gabriel Rowe for a, a Bateman Merle team would be murder by numbers. It's a good name. I like that name. 
Um, I don't know. Yeah. If murder is there is there a better Sandra Bullock movie you could do? Like maybe you guys could go as like the Lake House or Premi- like Practical the, Magic, Premonition, or, Premonition, yeah, Love Potion Number Nine. I think that would be a good one. But uh, Murder by Numbers makes sense for you. I just think it's interesting because it's actually like this kind of weirdly forgotten film. Um, but we could, uh, just, yeah, we could just be Speed. Um, Michael Gro- <laughs> Michael bad, Grove Lisky. <laughs> Let's see the coyote being mauled by the beast and Bateman. Your eyebrows are unacceptable. Fortunately, you don't need them to climb back to the top. Thank you, Michael. Michael's not even TJ. Now that the eyebrows thing is catching on, apparently. Yeah. You should just um, do what I do. Just take a pen and just draw eyebrows on Ben on your laptop and you're good. Uh, and now another don't comment. Do that. <laughs> incidentally, from TJ, um, you technically started this by having bad eyebrows, Ben. Uh, TJ, <laughs> thank you. So it, it continues. It continues on. <laughs> Um, Julia knows, uh, Jules knows this horror showdown needs to happen with the super chat there. Thank you. I agree. Another one here. Um, this one, we just, we just heard this one. That was the one that was read on the super chat. And then David Morris excited for this potential match guys. Thank you so much for the generosity with these donations. I'm going to throw back to Goddard here to keep rolling on the uh, streamlabs. Okay. Uh, house Heisenberg. So people always guess which Schmodown competitor butts heads with Christian the most. And it seems like two names pop up the most and they happen to be on screen together right now. <laughs> Curious uh, about both of your thoughts on this question. Uh, that's yeah, it's probably us. Question. It's probably us or Sam, I think would be like the, then he's not a competitor anymore, but he's, he's, you know, manager. He counts. Um, but it all uh, depends what you mean when you say butts heads. I well, we, right. we, we, we care about the, I'm going to, I think I can speak for both of us when we say we really care about the game. We're really invested in the game. Um, and we want to make sure that we're, we understand the ins and outs of what's going on behind the scenes because it does affect us and it does affect our factions. And so we text him a lot and we ask him questions a lot. And sometimes if something's going on where we're like, Hey, wait a minute, we might ask, Hey, wait a minute. And he's just like done. And we're like, Oh, okay. Fair enough. And uh, that's probably as far as butting heads goes. Yeah, I think it's a fair. I think it's a fair answer to the question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, from Snark, I'm a Dungeon fan, but there are a few players I respect more than William Bibiani. Good luck this year, Bibs. Thank you. The I hope, uh, hope K the end of the year you Wolf be donated fan. forty dollars, taking it easy this week, but wow. still wanted to help reach the goal. Thank hey, you. Bibs, and salute Ben. Also, Bateman has the best brows in the business. TJ is absolutely out of his mind. Hashtag Team Bateman for life. My guy Kyle, Kyle Coppin, president of the Buy Stock and Ben Bateman fan club. It's, uh, you know, it's a, it's a good place to be. Kyle, thank you so much for that support and, of course, for that donation. We're only, we're, we're a mere $100 away from this donation. Now, wow. Guys, so, and uh, if I win, I get to keep it all, right? <laughs> That's how that works. Yeah. If you want to text Christian Harloff about that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, okay. Uh, we, should we move back on to the rules? Do we have more? Yeah. I think oh, there's yeah. more. Let's do yep. a, a few more and then we'll get back okay, to, let's do it. to you guys. Uh, Megs, where's the documentary of Bateman and Bibbs uh, uh, sparring over discussing the rule book? Well, here's oh. the my, here, here's my here's my favorite part about this story. So so I do this. I do the rough. It goes to legal. This is a long time ago before the pandemic. It comes back. It's it's all being discussed mid year. And it's like Christian's like, OK, eventually we're going to have to get to this. We're going to have to you know really figure out a way to ratify this thing. And he's he, he, he says and this is this is one week after that bomb of a match, but that horrible match against Shazam that I played. I, yeah, I remember this. The worst. And he texts me and he says, hey, uh, I need you and PJ and Janish and Bibbs to work together on this. And he said, there's there's no discussion. You're working with Bibbs on this. Yep. And, I, and, I, <laughs> and I was like, all right, I guess we're professionals. I guess it's <laughs> too soon, Christian, but fine. Uh, I literally, I got the same text from Christian and I was just like, does Ben Bateman want that? <laughs> and he was just like, it's fine. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and to be fair, and to be fair, although we butted heads over some stuff and we approached the game very differently, we it was very respectful the entire way through. It was. There were no name calling. There was no no one left in a huff. We gave as good as we got. And sometimes PJ and Frank gave, you know, had strong opinions about things and there was a lot of uh, uh, debate. But it, although it was a lot of fun and I actually didn't know how some of them were going to end up, um, I think the fact that Ben and I were in conflict about some of them made a lot of the rules better. It, it really kept all the bases covered. It was, I mean, it was a pretty, it was a four hour meeting. So it was at, I, at least, I think. 
yeah, it was a, it was a long, it was a long uh, meeting. So yeah, maybe Meg's maybe someday, maybe, maybe yeah. that'll be the next documentary. Doubtful. Just it'll probably just be like another, it'll probably just be like another Roka documentary. All right. What do we got? Uh, Dragon 17 been, I'm a huge fan. I really feel like you should stop doing these guarantees about not missing questions and not losing matches. If you hype yourself up, people won't get excited for your wins and will kill you. If you lose, kill well, silently. they already do. So uh, <laughs> it doesn't really matter what I do. I think, uh, but look, I say them because I believe them, you know, and I've got all I've got all the various things that I'm working on this season that I'm very excited. So if about you miss here. one question this season, you'll have to admit that you were wrong. No, I think I said I'm not gonna lose a match this season. I this thought season. you weren't gonna miss a question. I thought okay. it was no miss question. Missed, <laughs> I also heard that too, but let's 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 get let's take it away. Let's, if you we'll lose have one to match scrub, this we'll have to season. scrub the tape. We'll have to scrub the okay, tape. that's fine. Well Joaqu- Joaquin right. Oliveira here. Uh salute and hello from Gucci Verse, Bibbs and Bem. What are your favorite horror movies? Cheers from Brazil and Boston. Big salute to you, buddy. We actually did uh we, we talked yeah. about a favorite horror movies earlier. You gotta answer one more. Give him one more that you love. Ooh, one more. I'll say film. the descent. Great movie. Pretty good. Absolutely phenomenal film. Uh, I love Freddy no, versus I think... Jason. I Great think... movie. I Ultimate her... fan service film. That's the best fan service film ever. I think Hereditary is a better movie, but I think I'm more creeped out actually by Midsummer. I was really yeah. creeped out by Midsummer in the end. All right. I'm going to go with the movie that Midsummer ripped off, and I'm going to say The Wicker Man. Oh, uh, that's, that's a great, the original Wicker Man, the gotcha. scary Wicker Man. That movie is great, and there was nothing quite like it. So uh, I'm going to go with The Wicker Man. Midsummer is great too. It's just, for me, it was a little familiar. But yeah, it's it's great films. James Eaton here. Good day, Bibbs. Uh, good day, guys. Bibbs, thanks for the rule book. I'm making a hardcover coffee table book out of it. Could you give me a, a could give me four word for it? Cheers. I'm not sure what that Ooh, means, but like a hardcover forward. coffee. A like forward, you, like a like a like a book. Like a title? How author? No, like a, how authors do forward. Oh, a forward. Oh, a forward. Okay. Uh, sure. I guess. Fine. Uh, you Run know how to find me. Good me donated twenty dollars. Will full titles, including number and subtitle, always be required in an answer? And will the rule book be added to if a new unforeseen precedent is set? Mm-hmm. Uh, the question. Okay, to answer the second part first, the rule book is not set in stone forever. It is a living rule book, and it is possible to change it when the necess- necessity arises. In fact, we already had, after it was distributed to the players, a couple of really minor tweaks that have already happened. Just a couple of wordings that might have been vague, and we don't want anybody to be confused. So that's already been done. It's a living rule book. It can evolve. Uh, as for what was the first question again? I missed it. Let me scroll up real quick. Okay. The first question was with the rule book. In the meantime, we've got TJ back here again, not talking eyebrows this time. Says Event Horizon is top tier five star horror. I do love I do love Event Horizon. I, I actually don't. I'm in the minority on that one. I've never quite I've seen it like a bunch of times because everyone keeps telling me I'm missing something and it's not my favorite, but it's I, I know why people like it a lot. So the Ronnie B. Good said, will full titles, including number and yes. subtitles, always be required in an answer? And will no. the rule book be added to if unforeseen precedent is set? Uh, the, the answer to that question is not necessarily. Um, I'm trying to remember how specific the terminology is, but basically the question writers have the freedom to declare how accurate it needs to be. Like they can say, we just need the number. Like what number of Fast and Furious movie does Ava Mendez first appear in? You can't just say two if it's clarified like that. Yeah. Um, and there may be instances, in, for example, in Star Wars, again, it's all a matter of clarity. If the question is like, hey, what's the most recent movie Princess Leia appeared in, you don't need to write Star Wars Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker. Rise of Skywalker would be sufficient because it's incredibly clear. Um, but that's another one where it's a little loosey-goosey and there's going to be a lot of benefit of the doubt rule on that. Uh, if the answer to the question is just the title of the film you and there isn't a subtitle or anything like that, you'd better make sure you're abundantly clear. Um, we don't have a whole lot of time left before we bring on Collins. And so I want to make sure, uh, Goddard, how many more Streamlabs do we have left to read? We do have quite a few people are sending them in, but let me get to this two-parter from Toby Thrawn, and then we'll go from there. I think there's okay. a few okay. more after that. Cool. Um, rule book questions. A, are players at, uh, are players as replacement managers, e.g. Ben managing Dan, still possible? No. I believe that is no. not the case. Christian players does not no want longer. that. That's not a thing. Uh, yep. A lot of people are confused because there's this new thing at Team Captains that's more of an honorarium than anything else. It's more about like who's doing the work behind the scenes. But no, you need a actual like a, additional manager, and there's like going to be a whole pool of them if that's necessary. But no, players are not allowed to be managers. 
Are you the okay. captain? Of, are you the captain of the Mercs? Uh, I think I can say that. Yeah, we actually talked to Koi about it. I actually voted for. I actually told Koi, you know who should be the the captains of the Mercs? Co captains uh, was uh, the real rejects because they actually have seniority over me. <laughs> They've actually been playing the game for longer, uh, and we had some talk. And uh, yeah, no, I guess it's me. Um, so there you go. Uh, B. Our replacement managers fixed for the season, or can they be different people for the same faction over the over the course of the season? I think they can be different people because it's a matter of scheduling. That's basically the only reason why we'd need a replacement manager is if someone isn't available, in which case it's a matter of who else is available to take over for them. I think managers would get an opportunity to choose who they want, but I don't know all the details of that. Gotcha. Yep. I gotcha. think that's about how it's right. C, are tournament spots tradable? Uh, example, last year, both the Dungeon and the Rockstars would have benefited from trading Roxy's Star Wars tourney spots for one of Kaiser's single tourney spots. No. I actually wonder this myself, but no, is that officially no? Because uh, there are so, certain yeah. rules that are not in the rule book. Faction points are not in the rule book. Various faction related stuff is not in the rule book. And there's some tournament stuff that is not in the rule book because that is evolving. I, think. I asked Christian in the, in the weeks leading up to the draft, uh, which assets were tradable. And so draft picks season to season are tradable. Uh, a point appointed spots like rankings for instance like the number one contender $30 through super chat hey ben and bibs ben is a major reason why i'm a better question writer and bibs is one of the reasons mts is so darn entertaining with his intros the two of you are shmo royalty keep on kicking rainbows Thanks, Chris. Chris Engel's a fantastic writer. Does a lot of stuff in the uh, in the the Mark Riley uh, world of, of slowdown uh, preparations. So, Chris, terrific, terrific. I'm guy. honored. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, what I was going to say is, I asked about the different assets that were out there, um, and what he basically told me is the only tradable assets in terms of position are ones that are won from somewhere. So, like if you win your number one contender shot, uh, or sorry, or your title shot from free for all, I believe mm-hmm. that's tradable. Right. I think I could trade a title shot for like another draft pick, for example, if, if, if you win it. Right. If it's awarded yeah, course, to you because of, of yeah. but if it's, it's like mine, you are, yeah. for instance, like Dan could not trade away the number one contender shot right now that he has. Um, Mike can't trade that away as a, an inner geek. If that's mm-hmm. what he has, I can't remember if he Intriguing. has that or not. Okay. But, um, that's, I think, my understanding. Yeah, again, faction stuff, most of that is not in the rule book. That's a there's some talk about putting together some elder document for that. But that's not the we're looking at the gameplay rule book, not the faction rule book. Right. All right, I've got two uh, two more here. Okay, uh, Keith Kilduff. In the rule book, uh, the repeats are referred to as JTEs still. Mm-hmm. When do you think uh, that needs to stop being called JTEs and start becoming just repeats? As an in-house term, a new person finding the schmo down doesn't know what that means. Yeah, but that's true for a lot of terminology, I think. Um, when you think about how many like turns of phrase that people no longer have any memory of how it even got started – I think at this point it's tradition. Uh, maybe we'll change it somewhere down the road, but right now it's tradition. So I don't see any reason to change that. Also, technically in the rule book, it, it is referred to as a JTE rule refers to. So in matches, you'll notice people can say repeat the question. They can also say JTE and they get the same result. Mm-hmm. So it, it because you can say repeat the question, it means that it, I don't think it ever needs to be changed. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. And the last one here, Canada Rocks. The rule book seems unclear on this point. If there is a challenge, do both sides get to make their point? If yes. not, this would seem unfair. No, yes, yes. and yeah, that's actually that. one of the – there's like three things – uh, there's four things uh, I did to the rule book in the last like week that were based on some of the patrons got to read it. I was paying attention to some of the reactions and there were like three things where I was like, okay, that could be clear. So one of the things I did was clarify the challenge process even further. That's all worked out. That's all clear now. Don't worry about that. Uh, the other big thing I did was add a table of contents, which is really going to save us a lot of time in matches. So, uh, but there's a couple other minor word term, uh, terminology changes in order to make sure that there no one can do a little messy little challenge later down the road because some word wasn't clear. So there's like maybe like two and a half sentences of changes in the rule book happened in the last week. Um, so we is are there any others to read right now, Goddard? No, the rest were uh, schmobots. Um, as long as you got all the supers, then I believe we're all caught up. There's two little super chats here that are on screen here. This one, Moritz, the lead, lead motive. Greetings from Germany, guys. Do you think next season we'll have the same free agency draft keeper rules as this year? Action Army, growl, growl. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a, that's a Christian question, and I think it's going to just be it's going to depend how the season plays out for him. I, I think that's it. Might be tricky because every faction actually has a full roster right now, so maybe. Yeah. That I don't know, maybe somewhere down the line that'll be need to be discussed. So but that's totally a Christian question. 
Yeah, Michael again, uh, Gruzalski, uh, Michael Gruzluski. Um, salute from Germany. Eyebrows aside, I'm loving the content you guys produce since day one with a phonetic rule. Does Geppetto count? Probably. Yeah, I would think so. Uh, it's yeah. pronounced Geppetto, so you spell you spell Geppetto yeah. phonetically. You heard it correctly at some point, yeah. Um, so I believe we have Collins joining the show here in a few minutes. Um, and so in the meantime, I do want to go over a couple of these other notes that you've got, Bibbs. Sure. Uh, with these super chats, uh, obviously, you know, there's a large tax, as you guys know, that YouTube takes out of them. We're somewhere in the 30, uh, I think 30 to 50 away from this match happening. So wow. if you guys have other questions to get in, uh, in the next little while here, get them in. Uh, the match would have to start here probably in about 25. So okay. uh, get in your, uh, your donations if you guys want to get there. Mm-hmm. Uh, we would love to see it happen. And mm-hmm. obviously, if you have other Shmobots and Super Chats and Streamlabs, you just want to get in because you have a question to ask, that's cool too. It's not all in favor of this match. Uh, go ahead, Bibbs. What else we got? Okay. Uh, so uh, right, one of the things, because we changed uh, some of the challenge process and the idea of doing like a little finicky challenge for the purpose of interrupting the flow of the game, that's no longer worthwhile unless it's a really good challenge because you know, you're actually just not going to get it. Um, we wanted to come up with something new. And so a rule that we've been toying with for a long time is now in play. And it's a timeout rule. People get a certain number of time. I think it's 20 seconds <coughs> to talk to their manager and they can call it at any time, as long as it's between questions. Yeah. Also, it can't be during a speed round and it can't be during sudden death. Anything that's like timed like that, you don't get to do. But uh, yeah, so if you're in a rut, you can totally take a timeout and get your manager to give you a pep talk right before your five pointer. If you need a little boost, if you still have it available, you only get one and you and your manager can uh, both declare it. What about, uh, that's uh, pretty straightforward. What about in between like, um, Oh, uh, we both hit our five pointer going to overtime. Okay. Timeout. Like after Mark reads the rules for overtime or before my uh, understanding, my understanding yeah. is that, Anytime you are not in the middle of a question being asked or you're not in the middle of a round that has a time. So as you mentioned, the speed round mm-hmm. or sudden are, death, because it's about ending the game quickly. Yeah. Yeah. You can No, I think in sudden death between questions, you could take it. I believe you could take a time out in sudden death, unless that's written in the rules. I think that you it's written. I'll, I'll, let me double check. Actually. I think it's written in the rule book, but let me. Yeah. Check. Cause like even in between questions, I feel like a timeout during sudden death would be very, very helpful. Uh, I think the way that it's intended, and then again, Bibbs is the guy that did all the final stuff, so I'm just speaking out of my memory, is that you're supposed to be able to use it for any number of different I'm looking uh, at it right now. Uh, correct, correction. It cannot be used uh, during sudden death. Okay, correction. In the rule book, uh, you can, going into sudden death, declare a timeout, but once sudden death has commenced, timeouts are done, whether you use them or not. Ah, That's in okay. the rule book. But until then, except for the speed round, you can use them anytime between questions. Gotcha. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. I'm curious to see how people are going to use that for strategy. Uh, next up, there's actually, this is not going to affect people at home so much, but it's going to affect the players in an interesting way. Uh, previously, uh, players going into a match, we get to select two wheel categories to put on the wheel in round two or three if in a, in a championship match. Yeah. Um, there used to be an understanding that players weren't allowed to carry the same categories over and over and over again because but because that's kind of a hard uh uh ask on a lot of the question writers that the same categories get used over and over and also because we want to encourage players to develop multiple uh strengths the new wheel selection rule is players now ask for three categories in advance of a match they're only going to get two categories and they're not going to know which two until the day of the match so I don't totally understand that one. Uh, and this mm. one was, uh, I, I feel like this one must've gotten added or updated kind of more, a little more recently. No, we talked about this. I remember very succinctly we talked about this. So you submit this. I ran this. I ran this by you. You submit, Okay. So let's say, for example, uh, Ben, we know you're good at Oscars and movie release dates. And let's sure. say, hypothetically, uh, you've really been studying up on, I don't know, Quentin Tarantino. So those are the three you want to put on the, you would want to put on the wheel. You select those three and then the writers will pick which two go on there based on wheel composition. Right. Yeah. So I, I feel like that's one, I feel like that's one that I still don't totally understand, but it is written in the rule book. So uh, it is yeah. what it is. Uh, it just means that players you don't get absolute for... control over the wheel. There is at least one minor X factor going in. Mm. So worst case scenario, you might prepare for three categories and only two of them show up. Yeah, and I think this must have been a stipulation that came from the writing team and their necessity to be able to create the wheel properly and all that. It's part of it, yeah. Yeah, so. Okay, uh, moving on. Uh, there are now official warnings. Uh, these are basically flags. Uh, and uh, depending on how many warnings you get per match, uh, you could potentially lose a point or forfeit the match. So if you try to break rules, if there is genuinely disrespectful play, 
uh, if you any of those combinations, basically, you can get official warnings and you can lose points in a match. Yeah, it's uh, we we had to figure out a way to make players uh, actually be able to be punished, right, for for not yeah. following the and rules. It's not something that I think would have come up more than once or twice in the past. Uh, like maybe it's like you get an official warning that that's just a warning. There's nothing you get two, you lose a point. I can't imagine too many games in the past where there would have been more than one official warning, but we needed to make sure there was a consequence for people not paying attention, not playing the rules of the game and not playing the game properly. So that's just in there. It's a threat. Hopefully it never comes up. Yeah. Um, okay. There's also, uh, uh, there's also an official rule about making sure that uh, the writers who are not uh, competitors, they're not uh, actual like performers in the league are left out of uh, you know the drama. You know, you're not allowed to call, you can maybe be able to talk about whether or not you like to question, but you can't specifically call out the writers. That is not what they signed up for. Uh, and that is inviting them into a conversation, inviting them into sort of the fan sort of competitive angle. That is not, what's official so uh that is now low now that could be met with an official warning if you take that too far yeah so we uh we i want to talk a little bit more about these uh, as well and, and and that one you just mentioned as we so many of us know and love the writing team they're great mm-hmm. people and they work extremely yes. hard uh, and signing on to write questions for the showdown doesn't necessarily put you in the limelight there's also a level to it that i think we all understand which is that many of the writers do actually have public personalities in terms of youtube channels and twitter and they interact a lot so there is a level to that that is uh, a little nebulous but i think there's a rule in there that's intended to make it so that players can't just you know maliciously go after them because in the past it's been a a very kind of an uncomfortable thing fan listen we all have people who support us and that's really really wonderful but we want to make sure that we just make sure that uh you know we keep the drama focused where it needs to be focused which is on the players and on the matches and not about people behind the scenes who aren't really supposed to be a part of that so that's something where we just want to make sure everything stays you know respectful so we're bringing on uh, uh, Collins here in just a minute here, but last two super chats that are on screen. Uh, ben, Bibiani, can you think of a particular time in Schmodown history that you would have appreciated the rule this rule book around? I mean, every time I've ever challenged a question every challenge. ever. Every uh, challenge. Situations that were like characteristically unfair, um, mm-hmm. I feel like are, are situ- like, I, I, there's Imagine so many. Imagine if, if we'd had this rule book when the David O. Russell thing came out, it would have been, that would have been over in a minute. And maybe some people wouldn't have been happy, but it would have been clear and there would have been no debate whatsoever. It's like, this is in the rule book, punctuate, literally in the rule book, punctuation is not important in, in spelling. So it would have been fine. Someone wouldn't have been happy, but it would have been clear. And then that would have been that. Uh, next so question that, that kind of thing would have been great. Matt Valentine here says, how do you differentiate heel work versus disrespectful play? You're never, ever going to be able to, unless it's just absolutely clear that somebody is being like if you're going after something personal in someone's life that doesn't exist in the showdown, yeah. you go after their job or you yeah. go after something that has nothing, for instance, something I'm outside releasing, the game, I'm That's releasing an album in June, for instance, and I'm working my whole, all my energy is going into it, as you guys know. And if somebody was to come on a promo and be like, you're a terrible musician, you should, you should break your guitars. It would just be like, really? Like, that's a, like, that just sounds like such a mean spirited thing to say. Like that's the cruel. boss doesn't, has, the boss doesn't play music. Like that's no, not my character. It's in the cruel and it has nothing to do with the game. And what's more is that if you're presenting that, that's maybe preventing people from buying the album, which would suck. And we don't want that. So again, but, they're, they're nebulous the, lines sometimes. On the other hand, if someone did choose to do that, uh, it's, I can't prevent them from doing it. Uh, so it's, 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 it's a difficult line. It's always a nebulous line. It's a very hard thing to, it's a very hard thing to police. Basically, there needs to be a rule in place for when we, for when people behind the scenes feel it has been taken too far. That yeah. needs to be in, because the players need to feel safe out there. Because again, we're, there's drama out there, there's competitiveness, there are fans who are very passionate, and there needs to be some protection in place for if people feel, listen, I genuinely think so and so went too far. There needs yeah. to be something in place for that. So we just want to make sure we had something in there. Uh, George Fitzpatrick here asks, and this is the last one we're going to do here, and then we're going to be bringing on the champion of the world here, Adam Collins. Uh, George Fitzpatrick asks, follow-up question about the three-category rule. Can you pick the same three categories for the rest of your career, or is there still a limit? Yes, you can pick the same three every single year, every single time. If you really, really want to, there's no rule against it. However, you won't get the same two necessarily on the wheel every single time. Right. There is still, there and, is still a, a limit to it. And of course the danger is, is that if you do that over and over again, your opponents are going to know which two you pick and they'll be ready for it. And those won't be useful anymore. Yeah. So there's, it's not necessarily a good strategy. 
So guys, we are going to uh, probably have more conversations about the rule book as the year goes on. Bibs, uh, feel free to stick around through this. We'll kind of, all the three of us will get to hang out. And of course, at the end of it, we have hit our goal. So we wow. will be getting this match. This match is going to be happening. We're going to be seeing a, a 10, potentially 13 question horror head to head with the champion of the world, Adam Collins, William the Beast Bibiani. We welcome to the show right now, Adam Collins to come hang with us, talk shop a little bit. Hi, Adam. Hey, Adam. guys. Can you, you hear me doing, all right? Yeah, you yeah, sound good, well. right? I'm doing well. Wearing my uh, uh, equally stylish Skybound produced hoodie. Um, awesome. With with very nice color saturation. You're looking sharp, Bibbs. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very uh, nice. You you always look sharp, sir. I admire your hair. Oh, wow. Well, I do what I can with what I got. <laughs> and what you've got is more than me. So uh, I'm actually totally fine with being bald. But in any case, regardless, you look fabulous. Oh, I you, distinctly need to get my, uh, my my dungeon hoodie. It's something I'm missing. Uh, as a quick reminder, is just because you're on screen and it's important for you guys to know, everyone watching, faction merch is for sale right now on Skybound. And a portion of the proceeds of every single piece of faction merch you go to goes into a pot at the end of the season. The first and second place factions out of the eight will be splitting it first, of course, with a higher percentage because they're going to win. Uh, but that means that right now, if you go and you buy your favorite merch, you will absolutely have a 25% chance of supporting your favorite faction, but you guaranteed will be supporting the players the managers the people that put so much time and energy into this so get your faction merch today it's available right now adam welcome to the show it's been a it's been a wild off season a lot of stuff going on you've gotten to sit back and watch the, the free agency special the draft special more buzz than i think i've ever seen in a schmodown season it's definitely more than i've ever seen in an off season uh and you're the champ you got the belt over your shoulder during that time it's a good time to be champ yeah, well, it's technically up on the shelf. I'm sorry it's out of the shot right now. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's it's been a very, very dynamic offseason uh, for everybody, whether uh, we were in the draft or not. Um, we all had a lot of a lot on our plates. Uh, obviously, Bateman, you were very involved. Viviani, I know you were very involved in your draft uh, with the Mercs. Um, and corruption was no different. But we had to play a long game here, as you know, uh, by giving up our first two draft picks. And I think it paid off. We're sad to not have Laura in, in the for now, but uh, uh, I think getting Sully and Scrimshaw uh, in exchange for the time being isn't too bad a deal. I mean, you guys have in the Star Wars division, the margin is razor thin. We all know, we've all seen it. We all we all know how difficult that division is to win. So we could all be looking at the end of the year, and it could be Sean Sullivan that's the champion. We don't know. Uh, there's a lot of great players in that division. So you you rolled the dice, you took a chance on the players you took that you could get when you got them. And I think a lot of people have wondered this, Adam. People have heard the rumor that you would be interested in playing in the Star Wars division. This is something people on various shows have talked about. Is that uh, is there any reality to that? Uh, it's all about priorities, Ben. Uh, so I know what my immediate priority is. Um, and that's my, my first defense of this belt. Um, the second priority is getting back into teams when, when Christian uh, opens the doors back up for that. Uh, you know, Marisol and I are very excited to work together again and very confident that with more, uh, more season ahead of us this year, we, we, can, we can prove a lot more in the team's uh, division. Uh, but uh, I've made no secret that I'm a fan of that franchise. I like Star Wars quite a bit. Um, and uh, But the Star Wars division is increasingly competitive. It's really crowded with all these talented rookies. Um, and you got people like Chandru and Roka and Barbarian saying they might throw their hats in. So I'll never rule it out, but I can't in good conscience prioritize it. Well, you know, you only need 60 days to get ready. Anybody could do it. So uh, you absolutely could take a shot at it if you wanted to. Uh, but, you know, there's... some people need 60 days. We'll see. <laughs> That's what they say. Uh, so, listen, I, I want your opinions, both of your opinions on this upcoming number one contender match. We have two of the all time legends in the movie trivia showdown. We have the greatest of all time, Dan Merle, mm -hmm. against the guy that's saying, he will never admit Dan Merle is the greatest of all time until Dan beats him. Um, Jeff Snyder is going to be going up against, of course, uh, Dan, Dan Merle, sorry, Jeff Snyder, Dan Merle, getting mixed up in the names. Uh, number one contender match. The winner of that match is going to play against you, sir. I want to know straight up, where do you guys think this match goes? What do you think? I'll start with you, Bibbs. 
Uh, yeah, okay, so obviously these are very tough competitors, and uh, I think the obvious on-paper answer is it'll probably be Dan, you know, he's got such a storied career, uh, but I do believe that there are actually some disadvantages for Dan in this match. Uh, one, Jeff is a very in-your-face player, he doesn't play the way every other player does, uh, and that can topple any, maybe not topple, but that can sort of make the game feel different and that might be a potential problem for Dan but I think the bigger issue is that Dan is used to playing five rounders he spent most of his career playing five rounders and in a five rounder there's a plenty of time to make up lost ground if you have a rough round two if your betting round doesn't go well that kind of thing Ben you've experienced this firsthand um so in a three round match if Snyder is able to come out swinging and get like a perfect round one and a perfect round two this really could go either way because the fives lately have been very difficult overall and even the best player in the world can miss them once in a while. So I look forward to a real tight match. Uh, I think probably if I were a gambler, I might be betting on Dan, but seriously, this could go Jeff's way. Um, yeah, absolutely. I think, I think that your points are pretty sound there. The difference between the three and the five is is very pronounced and, Look, it's something that I, I definitely started to feel that same burn of in the last year. I realized how few three rounders I played and how, you know, when you're when you're coming up, like you just did Collins, like so many of the matches in a row, it's the three round format. You're just used to it. You count the points that way. You think about the match that way. Uh, the five rounder is it does afford a lot more strategy. It affords a lot more ground to make up. It can certainly swing the other direction. But uh, I do wonder. I wonder where Dan's head is going to be at. Um, thankfully, I, I know how focused he is, and, and I have no doubt in my mind where I would pick. But that's maybe I'm a little biased. I don't know. Uh, Collins, what, what do you see? What do you think? Uh, I think, you know, uh, the conventional wisdom, you know, a lot of people are pointing to Dan to win this match. And none of us would be surprised if Dan wins. Dan is very good at winning matches. But uh, Snyder proved last year that he can't be underestimated. And I think he's playing at the highest level he's ever played in most of his matches. Uh, his accuracy rate is higher. His confidence is higher. Uh, I think he prepares more than he lets on, um, which is not a bad thing. But I do think uh, he's been putting in a little more work in between matches, um, just given the way he's been nailing round two uh, in the past season. So, yeah, maybe first. Yeah. No, I was just going to say, I, I think, I think Snyder, uh, I think, be having it be a three round match levels the playing field a bit because uh, Dan has been doing five round matches like consistently uh, like three in a row. So I think for them to both step back to a three round format where it's just one-on-one, -on -one, I think that's going to put Snyder in a position to have a shot at, at beating him. I agree that Snyder has a shot. I something just occurred to me that I keep forgetting to factor this into my predictions because it's new this season. We have a big influx of new categories uh, and this could be an equalizer for anybody. Some of those categories could be things that Jeff has absolutely memorized. However, we know that Dan has been at least studying inner geekdom. And this year, inner geekdom categories are now all available in singles. There's not just one inner geekdom slice. Every single one of them is there. And we also know that Snyder has run into a roadblock with some of those in the past. So if Snyder isn't studying those, if Snyder isn't ready for those, Dan might be able to take advantage of that. And that could swing the odds back more considerably in Dan's favor. Yeah, and it's my understanding, too, that the uh, consolidated intergeekdom slice and singles is no longer an option uh, yeah. because all the individualized categories are. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's no longer at play, but these more specific categories are. And to, to Bibbs's point, I think that will throw a lot of people off. Yeah, a lot of people who just haven't been studying them because those are intergeek them uh, might find themselves in a bit of a pickle. And a lot of people who might be stronger in intergeek them might be able to make bigger tournament runs and such this season based almost exclusively on that if the wheel goes their way. So uh, we all have a lot of studying to do. They added a lot of categories this year. There's a huge number of categories, and I think yeah. you can expect to see. Uh, there are, I'm sure, certain ones we've all circled that we expect to see come up. And then there's also ones that I think are going to be very difficult to prepare for. I know that information will be released publicly soon. Christian's going to be, you know, making announcing it. And uh, it's it's a huge, huge, huge increase. Uh, there's so many to watch every movie to watch every movie that, that pertains to these new slices would be an impossibility for any competitor. Nobody has that number of hours because it's the yeah. huge number of categories. Yeah. It's good. Uh, Early in the season, I expect to see potentially that really change some matches in an unpredictable way, but maybe not. Who knows? Maybe everyone will just get really lucky and spend all the categories that they already know. 
Yeah, you never know. I mean, it's a we'll see. I mean, they'll, they'll, that'll be a whole other conversation when the yeah. when the wheel uh, you know slices get announced and uh, revealed. So. Uh, guys, look, I, I, we, we started a little late today, and we're going to lose the great Ben Goddard in just a minute here. Um, Goddard, do we have any Streamlabs waiting in the wings? I know we hit the goal here, so I imagine they, they might have they dried up here. Oh, we got one from Nerdy Glasses. Can the Schmodown Live website have player profiles where you can click on a player's name in a faction to see their personal stats, notable achievements, etc.? Especially helpful for newer players so I can see who is from Dragon Con and Fan League. Oh, That's it's a lot a, of work. Great idea. Yeah. It's it a lot is. of work, but that's a great idea. Yeah, it's. I, I mean, I think it's. Uh, it's. I don't think it's an insane amount of work, though, considering there's. There's what? How many active players in the league right now? There's eight, yeah, ninety six, ninety six players in the league. Which is that? But even so, just busy work that will take time. Yes. And uh, it's a question of you have to build pages, you have to make sure. Um, so it's a really good idea. I hope. I hope maybe we consider that, but it might not be practical at the moment. So. It's a fair point. Uh, D train here with the super chat. Hopefully Collins doesn't pull a Patrick Mahomes and actually retains the title by the end of the season. Uh, look, Collins. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> uh, before you answer for Adam, because Adam is a great player. I will not take that disrespect for Patrick Mahomes. How is he Patrick was... Mahomes? He is the quarterback player. of the Kansas city chiefs. The one who just, oh, uh, dude was throwing super perfect Bowl. dime passes while he was horizontal and the receivers were not catching it. So I will not take that disrespect on the show. All right. Very good. Very good. Uh, cool. <laughs> uh, I have I have nothing against Patrick Mahomes. Uh, he seems like a promising uh, young man in his field. Uh, so I, uh, you know, I see a lot of potential in there, but uh, I'm playing a different game. So we'll see. I have every intent of defending that belt. Uh, any match in particular before we get into our super awesome horror exhibition match coming up here in just a second uh, that you in particular are looking forward to, Adam? I know a bunch of matches were just announced. Christian put a whole bunch of them up. Um, any any that stand out to you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, you guys already covered Bibbs and Oyama. Uh, Chance and the Kid is very exciting. Um, and, uh, and, and Marisol and Vinny, uh, you know, um, that, that's going to be a big one. Uh, Marisol is more than capable of taking this, but we are not resting on Vinny. We know how talented he is and how knowledgeable and how sneaky uh, he is with that knowledge. So I, I think that's going to be a, a really good match as well. Um, uh, and, and of course, um, Sully and uh, uh, Marie. Uh, really excited that that one's been announced as well. And I know Sully is really, really amped up for his Star Wars debut this year. I'm very excited to see what happens with the, uh, the dragon con three. I think, uh, I, I just think the rookies, there's just a lot of rookies that I can't wait to see play. So, mm -hmm. uh, guys, you asked for it. You donated. It's been an unbelievably generous day by you, the fans of the movie trivia Schmodown. Um, Dwayne, I hope you can help me with this by keeping score. Cause I think we're going to lose Goddard in just a minute. Ben, thank you so much for sticking around and doing the later show with us today. I know it was a little <laughs> bit of a jumping around on this to make it happen, but I do want to ask everybody here a last two things. The first one is hit the thumbs up on this video. Um, hit the thumbs up on this video. Let's get some likes on this thing. We've got over 400 watching, 200 and some odd likes. The other one, the other question I have for you guys is many of you know that I do content over on Action Industries. I've been doing it for a number of years uh, with Andrew Guy. Uh, we're, we're trying to get to 4,000 subs. We're about 15 away. Uh, and I always ask you guys wow. to follow what we're doing. So if I could, I'm going to post the link here in the chat. Uh, that, is, that is the link to our channel. If you are watching the show and you haven't already subbed, we do Schmodown content. We have a show called Root of the Question that we do uh, once a month. We kind of go down and break down the writing and the intricacies of, of question writing, which uh, we're very excited about. They actually, there's an episode this Saturday. So check that out. It's a super fun show. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's there. So, and right, if you I'm love soap, head on over to Etsy and get some Salt Cat soap. This is our Lucky Luke and Bart. Smells like clover. It looks like Luke's ears. Uh, we got these breakup bars that are super cool. Etsy, Salt Cat soap. Look at this. The screen has turned into House of Mirrors, people are saying. Um, I don't even know what's going on here. But uh, yeah, <laughs> but we can still see the soap. We can still see the soap. Big salute to all you guys. Right. Thank you. Uh, all right, guys. I'm going to pull up the questions here, and we are going to get ready for an epic, for an epic head-to-head -head match. Uh, minimum 10 questions here, and we may get as many as 13. How uh, appropriate. Many people, many people have, have wanted to see this one go down. I read Adam, it is questions. an honor. You too, Bibbs. Thank you. I, I think you guys will do. I think you guys will do pretty well on this show here today. So. One more time, a big thank you to all of you for donating and supporting. It's uh, it's awesome that you guys make these thank happen you. every week. It's a great component we've gotten to add to the show. Um, so, Dwayne, are you able to uh, help me keep score here, buddy? Yep, I got you. Excellent. All right. 
We're going to start these fellas out here. Question number one. In The Shining, what is the name of Danny's imaginary friend? All right. <laughs> we, I, on the screen, it appears as though we've lost Adam. Um, I can see Adam. Yeah, I'm, I'm working on it. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> All right, we're going to count you down in five, four, there we go. three, two, one, and pens down, pens down. I'm going to start with you because I can see you on the YouTube screen here, Bibbs. Okay, well, if you want to get technical, nobody, because Tony is not imaginary, but Tony is the answer you're probably looking for. Tony is the answer I was looking for. Uh, can I turn my board around? Yes. Tony. Tony, we have Tony. All right, one to one, one to one. Started off with a... The relative softball, that one, I would have gotten that one. Um, <laughs> some of these I would have gotten. I won't tell you which <laughs> others. Um, in Scream, question number two. In Scream, Drew Barrymore's character gives a wrong answer about what horror movie leading to her boyfriend's death. All right. Just a couple masters of their of their genre here. The... Uh, Counting you guys down here in five, four. You each get one repeat, by the way. Three, two, one. Pens down. We'll start with you, Adam, this time first. Friday the 13th. That is correct. And Bibbs. Because there are two films called this, I clarified the original Friday the 13th. Uh, it's a good clarification. I appreciate that. <laughs> Benefit of the doubt rule. Not in play here, Bibbs. This is not a sanctioned <laughs> match. I can do what I want. I'm the judge. All right, you, can um, just, you can just say I lose them all. That'd be awesome. Um, all right. Question number three. Question number three. It's 2 2 right now. It's 2 2. In what 2010s horror film does a widow struggle to take care of her troubled young son after her husband dies in a car accident? Count you guys down here in five, four, Three, two, one, pens down. Let's start with Bibbs here. A Babadook, Duck, Duck. A Babadook is correct. Collins. Hmm. I wrote The Possession. The Possession. Okay. That's the Underrated Jeffrey film. Dean Morgan one, right? That's the Jeffrey yep, Dean Morgan one? Modest Yao is The Exorcist. I like mm -hmm. that movie. I like that movie. Yeah, uh, all right. So uh, Bibbs draws First Blood, up 3 2 now on the champion of the world. Uh, it is a free for all format. So unsurprising, of course. Then again, then again, actually, Adam Collins has won a free-for-all, even though I would still say Bibbs is the greatest free-for-all player of all time. <laughs> um, all right, we're going to continue moving through the questions here, and I will continue to needle Bibbs when I can. Uh, sure. question, number, question number four. What 90s sci-fi horror film starring Sam Neill has the tag tagline, Infinite Space, Infinite Terror? And uh, I'm going to count this one down in five, four, three, two, one. Pence, that's funny that that's, we were talking about this movie an hour ago. Uh, first first to you, Collins. Event Horizon. Event Horizon is correct. And to you, Vibs. Second best Sam Neill horror movie of the 90s, Event Horizon. Event Horizon. All right. So Bibbs leads 4-3. Still hasn't missed. Uh, we are going to continue moving through here. Um, all right. Question number five. Who plays the character of Emily Rose in The Exorcism of Emily Rose? Let's see. Fans are loving this. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you, guys. Uh, we're going to be counting you guys down here in five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, pens down. I'm going to go to you first, Collins. Jennifer Carpenter. That is correct. Jennifer Carpenter. All right. Bibbs leads 5-4. We continue moving through. Halfway through here. Uh, are we going to see a perfect 10-9? Is that how this is going to end? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see how tough um, the questions are. Yeah, I got a couple I got a couple curveballs in here I can throw in. I'll see. I'm, I'm, I've got – maybe let's, let's, let's use one. I'll throw in now. Um, all right. Call so, it. Is it really a curve? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 
question number six, is it? Question number yep. six. Your Sister is a Werewolf is the subtitle of the 1985 sequel to what horror film? Wow, both writing quickly and furiously. This movie is amazing. The sequel. Actually, the original is amazing too, but the sequel is just like, what the hell? Where you see these guys really flexing their horror muscles in five, four, three, two, one. We'll go to Bibbs first. The Howling. The Howling is correct. Collins. The Howling. The Howling. Look at these guys. Look at these guys. Wow. They. All right. So they, they hit the first curveball here. Very impressive. Um, all right. Next up, uh, question number seven. Uh, I think this is question number seven. Dwayne, what's the score right now? Is it 6-5? Yes, currently 6-5. Six, 6-5. Five. Six, five. Uh, question number seven. Which Oscar-winning actress stars as heiress Sarah Winchester in the 2018 film Winchester? All right. When you said heiress, I thought you were talking about a Final Fantasy character for a second. I was like, what? Mm. Five, four, three... Two, one, pens down, pens down. Let's start with you, Collins. Helen Mirren. Helen Mirren is correct. Helen Mirren. Helen Mirren is also correct. All right, so we're getting, we're, we're moving fast on this one. Uh, you guys are, yeah, all right. A couple, couple, uh, couple left here, couple left. Uh, all right, question number eight. Who plays the lead role of Arthur Criticos in the 2001 remake of 13 Ghosts. No repeats used yet from these gentlemen. We're going to count you down in five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. What do you got, Bibbs? Tony Shaloub. Tony Shaloub is correct. Adam. Tony Shalhoub. Tony Shalhoub. All right, guys. Only two questions left here. You got to hope. Go ahead. I saw that movie. I was the only one in a movie theater except for Billy Corgan. Wow. It was a weird day. (laughs) Uh, Question number nine. Who wrote and directed the 1999 ghostly thriller Stir of Echoes? All right. Looks like these guys are ready. Let's count them down in five, four, three, two, one. Uh, let's start with you, Mr. Collins. I believe it's pronounced David Kep. David Kep, correct. It, it is indeed pronounced David Kep. I interviewed him last year, actually. Nice guy. David Kep. All right. So Bibbs currently leads nine to eight. The only way that we go into overtime to see the extra questions is if Bibbs misses and Collins gets it right. Otherwise, we're going to see the single blunder. Uh, decide the whole fate of the game, the 10, nine win, which would be, which would be a hell of a thing. Uh, these guys. So let's, let's throw this one at you guys here with, uh, all right. In the 2012 film underworld awakening, what is the term given to the series of mass killings of vampires and lichens after humans discover their existence? We saved the toughest question for last. Let's see if it draws blood uh, here. <laughs> God. It's not even one of the good underworld movies. <laughs> I'm going to count you guys. There's still a repeat left. Five. Okay. No, four, I don't, I'm guessing. Three, two, one. Pens down. Okay. Let's see. What do you got, Bibbs? I don't know. Purging. Uh, Collins, what'd you write? The Purge. So I've got written down here, Purge or Purges. Uh, I think I'm going to give it to you guys both. It's, this is a tense issue because if we were purging something, right? I thought I wasn't sure about the tense. I think the fact that you wrote purging and the purge and I have, I'm going to give it to you both. I can't, okay. I can't, I can't figure out a way to not get, I would have to give it not to either of you given what's written on the board um, or both of you. You want to ask the that. other three, you want to ask the other three questions anyway, since we're here, <laughs> I love questions. Um, there's only, I mean, the other ones are easy. Um uh, no, I think we got to save him. So, okay, by the way, guys, fine. I didn't, I didn't say it. I didn't say it until now. But those were actually unused questions from the horror free for all. Oh, 
Oh, uh, those oh, were okay. that was a set That's of fun. questions that were unused from the horror free for all. So I actually meant to say it earlier in the show to hype it up, but you guys were so excited we hit the goal anyway. Which so it would have done pretty good. Okay. I mean, uh, <laughs> incredible <laughs> stuff to the two of you guys head to head, ten to nine. I mean, that's about what people expected, well, I think. Yeah. Congratulations, Mr. Bibiani. And for what it's worth, uh, yeah, I know the Babadook, but I forgot about the dad dying in a car crash. That was the detail that threw yeah. me. So good on the good on the writers. Yeah, good on the writers indeed. And thank you. Yeah, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna lie. Purging, 100% guess. I don't even <laughs> remember that at all. I just like, I don't know. Purging sounds good. It's so a good guess. Uh, it's, a, it's a good guess. The possession. Yeah. You're thinking of in the possession. I feel like at the end they're in the car, right? Yeah. And there's a car crash. And they get thrown from the car right at the end. That's mm -hmm. probably the shot in your mind. You're thinking there's a dad and there's a car crash. So there you go. Um, but, uh, but anyway, guys, uh, that was amazing. Thank you so much to both of you for doing this. Bibbs, thank you so much for enlightening us on the rule book. Uh, thank you to the fans for you guys all doing this and, and uh, you know, for making sure that this match happened. This was so much fun. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, Adam for making time to jump on to briefly talk about uh, this match coming up, to be a part of this, to support the show. As you guys know, watching this, uh, we do, you know, your support is what keeps the Schmoot on going. There's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of pieces all that, uh, you know, need to be need to be supported and paid for their work. And there's a lot of them. So these types of shows are what uh, help help keep that going. So yes, one, th one thing before we go, I just want to say, Adam, it's been a real honor to play you. I wanted to play you all last season in one form or another. And I'm really, really honored that I got to. It's super close. I can't wait to play you again in proper match. Oh, yeah, I, I it's inevitable. And I think we're both going to make a splash in the next horror match. I'm pretty confident in that. Fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, gentlemen. Well, I guess uh, before I let you go, I want to make sure, Dwayne, can you tell me if we have any Streamlabs or Super Chats left over we need to read? Um, I'm hoping you have those only because I know we lost Goddard here. Uh, let me know if you need a minute to pull it up. Uh, nope, we got nothing else. We got them all. All right, excellent. Guys, go to patreon.com slash schmodown. Become a patron today. Become a patron today. We've got the exhibition matches and, of course, the pay-per-views, three of which you guys are going to be seeing over the course of the next month unbelievable schedule announced thank you for watching the show we're gonna get out of here fellas thanks get the soap and bye, soap. Uh, and uh we'll see y'all soon bye guys